Welcome back everybody to another episode of T-Shirt Driving where we're always doing something mechanical, driving fun, or just having shenanigans. So in today's episode, which is brought to you by Rotoro, we are gonna be working on this Focus RS. Well, less seeing the work and more seeing the after product because Rotoro has supplied Wes, right there, with a replacement OEM kit. Now this is not a big brake kit. So those of you that are looking for a brake replacement kit, they do offer that for your rotors, your pads, and your lines, especially if you don't wanna upgrade calipers and spend a huge amount of money. So let's take a look at the befores and afters and comparisons of what you get and the quality that you get, at least on the Focus RS platform, but they also have this as well on our Volvo V60 S60 platforms, as well as many other platforms out there that they provide kits for. For big brake kits, they also provide their OEM replacement kits. So as you can see with our Brembo kit in the front, this is OEM, you can see it's a single rotor and we've got our basic rubber lines in the back as well. We're gonna be replacing the pads with H2 pads, which is actually what I run on my own car for street. It's great for low dust and great initial bite. In the rear you can see too, again it's single, there's no veins in it. We're gonna be replacing the pads and those rubber lines. So here you can see the rotor, a two piece rotor in the front. So we went with a slotted design. You've got your semi float rotor. We've got our H2 pads in there. And then what you'll also notice is the veins are way larger for cooling capacity than OEM. The rotor itself is three millimeters wider than OEM, and as you can see, it fits perfectly just fine in the Brembo casing. You get your replacement brake line, stainless steel with your Teflon coating, and it's just a masterpiece of how it looks. And again, it's reusing the OEM caliper. In the rear, we've got the same thing. So both rotors are zinc coated, so that's gonna prevent corrosion. So only the part that you will physically see rust happening is after you wash the car, drive the rain where the brake pad mates. Now, same thing here, replacement pads, reusing the caliper. And again, we've got our replacement brake lines all installed. Now, something with the rear is we did replace the bolts that hold the caliper bracket. And we're gonna go over to the bench and show you why. So the reason why we replace those two bolts that mount the caliper bracket to the hub assembly is because they've got this funky star design and it be made it extremely difficult to remove even with the proper tool where it would strip it out. So we upgraded it to a 17 millimeter hex bolt with a washer. Everything fits perfect. It's the same thread pitch, which I believe is M10 by 1.5. And with a little bit of Loctite, it's gonna do the same job, but it will make maintenance so much easier than what Ford provided here. So that's a tip if you are gonna be doing this upgrade as well is to replace your bolts. Have four ready to replace. So let's take a side-by-side -side comparison on the new and old or OEM setup. So your brake lines, this is the rear one. You can see that they are skinnier. However, it's still going to allow ample pressure to get through. They're not gonna expand under pressure or eventually crack like the rubber lines will eventually do. The other thing is because you're replacing these lines, your brake pedal is gonna feel firmer. It's gonna be more responsive because there's less expansion that is able to happen. You get all new hardware for the rear. So you get your new rubber boots, your new rubber caps. For both front and rear, you get new springs to hold in your brake line where it connects to the chassis of the car. And you also get your metal spring retainer for the rear, brand new. So let's take a look at the front rotor. Now the weight difference, I believe, is just over five pounds. I think it's actually closer to seven pounds. Um, yeah, that's definitely heavy. And you can see how skinny and even how straight the veins are for the ventilation. Now when we come over to the new setup, not only are the vents curved, which allows a lot more airflow to be channeled through, but they are also wider. And this is significantly lighter, as well as having air vents right here through the channels where it meets it side by side. On the rears, 
they're essentially pretty identical except for the coating material, the slotted disc, and the quality finish. So as you can see with OEM, you get a lot of rust buildup, a lot of rust buildup in many of the nooks and crannies, which aesthetically pleasing is not so great. The slotted is going to constantly keep the pads from having any impurities in them. So that is a huge thing to, if you are canyon driving, track driving, when you swap out your pads, something that's really important to constantly keep your pads in the tip top shape for that initial bite. So we're gonna use the magic of editing to go ahead and install these. And when you see us, the right side will already be installed and then we're gonna take them for a test drive to not only show you how to bed in brand new brakes, but also to see Wes's opinion on what he thinks the brakes feel like before and after from OEM to the new Rotora setup. And just like that, the passenger side is all completed thanks to editing. But you can see, again, the Rotora two piece Stainless steel lines, H2 pads, completely and dramatically changes the look of that compared to what it was. And coming to the rear, same thing. We've got our one piece back here slotted and everything is all cleaned up and good to go. So another big benefit with going with the replacement kit for your rotors and pads and lines is compared to other companies such as like Mountune, who I've personally used Mountune before when I had my Fiesta ST, the prices are actually less for this kit, which is great because everybody wants to spend less, but you're also getting a high quality product that is not only enhancing your braking performance, but contributing to your cooling needs and reducing rotational mass and unsprung weight. So again, these veins are a lot larger as well as actually being rotated now, which is gonna dramatically aid in cooling. Um, we went ahead and removed the heat shield in the back, so the deflector is gonna truly hit the vast majority of the brake rotor now. So cooling performance is gonna be right up there. And you can always, the H2 pads are designed for street, but you can also order their track pads as well or in a more aggressive H6 pad if you kind of do very hard driving all the time. Um, so there are different options for you and it's still relatively easy to change out the brakes by pushing out these two pins, undoing the center bridge bolt, and then out they come. Just make sure you have a caliper tool to uh, compress your pistons afterwards. So huge benefits there. We're gonna throw the wheels on and show you the bedding in process. Pretty simple, but we're gonna show you anyway. So now we're gonna do our break-in procedure. So the brakes are installed, wheels and tires are installed, and the break-in procedure that I like to do for bedding in is gonna be 235 mile an hour to about five to zero. So you're braking pretty hard. You can do two of those, then you increase the speed to 45 miles an hour and do it back to about five miles an hour as well. Two of those, so 235s, 245s, slamming hard on your brakes. So again, we're gonna head up to 35 miles an hour and then slam on the brakes until we almost stop. And then hard brake. And then we're gonna repeat that. And hard brake. And now we're gonna go to 45 and do the same thing. Now 
we pretty much just let them coast. And uh, that's how you bend in your brakes. And this part, you want to drive the car and let the air naturally cool them down. You don't want to just stop right away because they are hot right now. So if you have to do a couple laps around your block, a couple laps on the freeway, let them cool down. You want to be able to drive for a couple minutes to bring them down to temperature. So nothing crazy long, but I'd say like five minutes of constant uh, rolling. All right, Wes, so give us your impressions for betting in the brakes. What did you feel different between these and the OEM setup? Uh, so the first two things I noticed right away, definitely the brake pedal response is phenomenal. So that is probably the first thing that you'll realize right away, at least for me, I did was the brake pedal response was just so beautiful. So uh, it was very engaging. Um, so that, that plus uh, how quiet it was, going from 60 all the way down to a quick stop, um, quiet. So the pads, the rotors, everything. I think I had some squeaking with uh, the previous set, uh, with the OEM and the uh, pads. This, I was pretty hard on it to, you know, bed them in. And they're quiet. And again, the best thing I would have would say about this is definitely the, uh, the brake pedal response. Um, the install was great. Uh, Peter, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lauren from Rotorot, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I couldn't be happier. So, uh, without you know changing the calibers, um, you can't go with a better system. I mean, this this now is you know as the final cherry to the to the RS. I think I've done a lot of other things, but one thing I haven't done was uh, any of the uh, brake uh, you know lines or pads or rotors or anything. Um, it comes with nice brim bros, yes. Uh, now I'm actually using them, so uh, I would say. 10 out of 10 uh, man the pedal response with the braking is beautiful they're quiet um, i'm excited to see when i start driving um, how much less dusty they will be um, i love it i love it so thank you again peter thank you again lauren uh yes rotora 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 so there you have it guys um another great install from rotora pads rotors lines you heard it from the man himself who is the customer who bought these so there you go have a good one.